the objective um, of this segment. Uh, so we will be focusing on um, a couple of research activities that I have been working on um, or I have worked on with um, ResDAC staff and, and also other faculty at the University of Minnesota um, working with the, uh, the carrier and um, outpatient files. Um, and so the, the first research exercise um, investigated the um, completeness of um, the encounter data, um, specifically the carrier and outpatient encounter data, um, by comparing healthcare utilization um, captured by the encounter data uh, relative to HEDIS data. Um, the, the second part um, of this segment is looking at a, a research example um, that, and this was joint research with, uh, with ResDAC folks, um, and we use the um, the carrier and outpatient files um, to investigate the association of enrollment in a full risk primary care organization um, with the use of ambulatory outpatient and emergency department visits. Um, and so um, the goals of the presentation today are really um, to provide some information, but also just show some examples of how we work through um, some an analyses and um, some, some challenges um, that hopefully will help you as you're working with the encounter data. I will start by just providing some uh, motivation for why we would um, you know, perform this HEDIS to encounter data um, comparison. Um, so I'm sure this has been emphasized in the sessions today, but a an important milestone was reached in May of 2023, um, where Medicare Advantage enrollment um, comprised more than 50% of Medicare beneficiaries. Um, and so in this context, um, it's really important to understand um, how healthcare is provided in the Medicare Advantage program. Um, but in order to do this, we need accurate data on healthcare use among Medicare Advantage enrollees. Um, and um, there have definitely been concerns raised about the completeness about, uh, of the Medicare Advantage encounter data. Um, this was especially true for the original release of the data in 2015. Um, and um, there is some great work by uh, Jia Jung and co-authors um, that showed extensive variation in the completeness of encounter data across contracts. Um, there's actually a more recent um, uh, analysis in the the June um, MedPAC report about looking at um, focus really on the inpatient data, but also the post-acute data, but not really as much the outpatient and carrier data. Um, looking at completeness, um, which is you know a good a, another good resource. Um, so what we did in this in this research was we. Um, you know, we we tackled this question of the completeness of the encounter data. Um, in this analysis, we focused on 2015 through 2018, um, and so the goal of showing this today is 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 really providing some information, but also just an example of a process you could use to understand um, the completeness of the encounter data in your own analyses, and how that you know maybe um, sort of if you're focusing on a a certain Medicare Advantage contract you could follow a process like this to sort of better understand if you're capturing, um, you know, all the encounters you need to be looking at. Um, okay, so the uh, a key part of assessing the completeness of encounter data is that, um, you know, we need a, a sort of gold standard data source. So that is a, a data source that um, we believe to be accurate and complete. Um, and so for this analysis, we used the um, healthcare effectiveness data and information set data, which I will refer to as HEDIS data. Um, so for those of you who haven't, aren't familiar with these data, they um, Medicare Advantage plans are required to submit data on quality and healthcare use to CMS um, to calculate plan for performance. Um, and so in these data, we focus on two measures. The first was ambulatory outpatient visits 
per 1,000 member months. And the second measure um, was emergency department visits per 1,000 member months. Um, one important thing to realize, though, about the HEDIS data is that it's it's like arguably not exactly a, a gold standard uh, data source in the sense that, you know, MedPAC has noted this in, in 2019 and 2024 in their Medicare Advantage um, analyses um, that, you know, the HEDIS data are not really external or validated. And in fact, they are um, the Medicare Advantage plan summary of its own encounter data um, by apply that's applying specifications from the, the um, National Committee for, for Quality Assurance. Um, so in a certain sense, our analysis is really more showing the consistency of the plan submitted HEDIS measures uh, relative to the plan submitted encounter data. Um, and and uh, rather than sort of saying for sure whether the encounter data are um, complete. Um, and then and then one other note um, is that um, at the time um, that we were working on this analysis, we only had the um, contract level HEDIS data rather than the person level HEDIS data. Um, and so, and so we couldn't determine if, you know, we, we couldn't do this linkage on a person to person level. We were basically rolling everything up to the contract level and sort of saying like, do we see that the um, contract level HEDIS data sort of corresponds well with our own, you know, um, recreation of the contract level HEDIS data with the encounter data. Um, but I, I would say that this may be, I, I mean, not everyone has access to the HEDIS data. You might be working with um, encounter data um, without the HEDIS data. And so this is, you know, you can um, download the contract level HEDIS data from CMS and, and this is a, a, a procedure you could follow. Um, I saw a question came through, let's see. Um, oh, okay, this was uh, from an earlier discussion. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so moving on. Um, so let's just talk about the data that we used to uh, do this comparison of encounter data and HEDIS data. Um, so starting from the, um, from the sort of Medicare data side, we used um, kind of four data sets. Um, the first was the Medicare, the master beneficiary summary file for Medicare Advantage enrollment information and contract um, information for each enrollee. Um, we used the carrier and outpatient encounter files in order to identify the outpatient visits and emergency department visits. Um, and then we also used the, the HEDIS specifications um, for each measure to essentially reconstruct the HEDIS measures using the encounter data. And the HEDIS specifications are actually also something that you need a, a data or sort of a kind of a data agreement with um, NCQA to, to, um, to use. Um, okay. <clears throat> so let's get into a bit more detail on how we um, constructed each of these measures. Um, so starting with the uh, master beneficiary summary file, a um, so again, I'm sure you've discussed this, but this is a um, a person level file in each year, um, which indicates Medicare enrollment um, in each month. And so a critical field for our analysis was the Part C contract ID uh, for each month. And um, this this field, um, we used um, to uh, link outpatient and emergency department visits um, to specific contracts in each month. And so this was, as we'll talk about in a few slides, this formed the, the numerator for our um, visit rates. Um, and then also, of course, it allowed us to calculate the, the number of member months for each Medicare Advantage contract which form the denominator for these um, these rates that we construct. So the um, second files that we used were the um, the carrier encounter files from 2015 to 2018. Um, so 
the carrier files include um, the professional encounters for Medicare Advantage enrollees. Um, and, and notably, the HEDIS data specifications um, involve identifying outpatient um, and ED visits using both professional encounters and facility um, encounters. And so we get the professional encounters from the from the carrier um, from the carrier encounter data. Um, the the carrier data include um, both like a, a claim level base segment that has sort of summarized information um, and then line level information um, that's just at the service level. So for our analysis, we use the the line level files. Um, we identified um, the relevant services in the carrier in the carrier data um, that were, you know, again, this is all derived from the um, NCQA specifications um, using um, codes from the Healthcare Commons Procedure Coding System or um, HICPICS codes. I'm sure many of you are familiar with those codes. So this is like, you know, 99213 is an evaluation visit. Um, and then we also used information um, in the carrier file on where a service was provided. So was it um, specifically, did it occur in um, an office or an outpatient hospital department? And so this is another uh, piece of information that we need um, for the HEDIS specifications. Okay, the, um, the third file that we used um, were the outpatient encounter files, um, which includes records for outpatient facility providers. Again, the uh, the HEDA specifications for outpatient and ED visits are identified in part using these facility level records. Similar to the, the carrier encounter files, the outpatient file includes both a claim level, includes claim level summary information, um, but also includes service level information at the revenue center level. And so we use the revenue center files in our analysis. Similar to the carrier data, we use HICPIX codes to identify the specific services. And um, there is a code in the revenue center files, the revenue center, and that code indicates which part of an outpatient facility provided a given service. Okay. So now let's talk about how we actually identify the outpatient visits in the encounter data. So we used three different methods for this, uh, just to test the sensitivity um, of alternative approaches. The first method we used was just to identify carrier lines that had a uh, HICPICS code that indicated an outpatient visit occurred. So in other words, Method one solely use the professional encounters to identify outpatient visits. Our second and third method was a combination of either using, you know, identifying um, outpatient visits in the professional data, professional files, or um, finding uh, outpatient visits, you know, with the right HICPICS range. Um, in a the facility file in the outpatient data, um, where the revenue center indicated that it occurred in a clinic, either an office or um, in an outpatient hospital department. Um, and then we also, for all three methods, we uh, performed some du deduplication on the service lines. And so basically we only counted um, one service line um, based on the beneficiary ID, the date that the um, the visit occurred, and the provider uh, based on the NPI. So another another way to put it is that we only counted one outpatient visits visit for the same person seeing the same doctor on the same day. Um, and the key difference between our method two and our method three was in uh, method three if we saw someone with an outpatient visit on the same day, uh, but we saw multiple visits with different providers, we counted them as separate visits. Whereas in method two, um, we counted them as the same visit. Um, 
And we also used the HEDIS specification or HEDIS specified exclusion restrictions, which included hospice users and um, individuals who were using mental health or chemical dependency services. Yeah, sorry, there was one question about whether the data was medical based versus behavioral health based. Um, and I think given that we did need to exclude um, the mental health, uh, those using mental health services and chemical dependency services, these are primarily medical visits. Yes, I think you could think of these visits as being essentially evaluation and management visits. Um, maybe a little bit broader than that, but that's the type of, of visits we're counting here. Um, okay, here it is. Um, and then there's another question. In comparing the two types of outpatient files, which one is higher outpatient visit utilization rates per year among the MA enrollees? Um, so we didn't ever only look at the outpatient files. We looked at the carrier files um, with or without the outpatient facility files. So, and we'll show you some data on how many visits that added in a slide or two. Okay. Um, but before we get to the those the data, let's talk about the um, our method for identifying the emergency department visits in the encounter data. Um, so here it's it's a bit um, sort of the reverse of the outpatient visit approach. So our first method identified lines in the outpatient facility file with an emergency department revenue center code. So again, our starting point is the facility file. And then um, methods two and three were um, said, okay, either we see an outpatient facility line um, or in the professional file, we see uh, service lines with an emergency department procedure or a place of service. Um, and then we had, um, we used this uh, two different, the difference between method two and three was that in method two, we wouldn't count a um, emergency department record in the carrier file if it did not have a corresponding facility record. Um, and so, here too, we uh, deduplicated the data. Um, and here it was just based on the um, beneficiary ID and then the, the dates, the from date and the through date for a service. Um, so if we saw, you know, uh, multiple record, multiple records for a beneficiary where the dates were overlapping, then we only counted one. And again, we, we, um, we excluded, um, again, the hospice um, patients, the mental health users, um, but also we excluded individuals who were then admitted to an inpatient um, uh, department or a skilled nursing facility. Okay. Hmm. Okay, and so uh, just just briefly, um, let's talk about how we constructed these um, contract level visit rates. So essentially, you know, we had these um, deduplicated counts of outpatient or or we I, we constructed these um, occurrences of deduplicated outpatient or emergency department visits um, for a given Medicare Advantage contract in a given year. And so the the numerator um, of the the rate was the number of visits um, for that contract in that year. And then the denominator was the total number of member months for that contract in that year. And then we just um, adjusted it to be the um, number of visits per 1,000 member months. Um, and so then we took these rates and we already had from the publicly available data, the HEDIS-based outpatient and emergency department rates at the contract year level. And so we uh, merged this data together and we constructed the ratio for a given contract in year um, of the encounter based visit rate to the um, HEDIS based visit rate. And we constructed separate rates for the outpatient and emergency department visits. 
So um, the the way to interpret this ratio is that a higher ratio means that the encounter data is capturing um, more visits than the HEDIS data. And a lower ratio means that, um, especially if it's the, um, you know, if the ratio is less than one, that means that the encounter data is capturing um, fewer visits than the HEDIS data. All right, any questions before I um, start showing some results? Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, and before, uh, yeah, before we dive into that, um, so we look at the ratios across the different methods for identifying the outpatient and emergency visits. Um, we look at how these ratios changed over time uh, between 2015 and 2018. We focused on the, the five largest Medicare Advantage insurers. So this, this is capturing 62% of an enrollment. Um, and the idea here is, are they, um, you know, is their encounter data more, uh, more complete? And then we, um, Kind of examined, uh, you know, whether insurers were high or low outliers in 2018. Okay. <clears throat> um, okay. So, so just again, just to uh, uh, review. So we're looking here at the distribution of ratios of encounter visits to HEDIS visits across the Medicare Advantage contracts, and so what we can see on this slide is that um, you know, using method one, so this is just identifying outpatient visits in the carrier file, um, the median contract had a ratio of 0.942. So that, that means that um, there were slightly fewer uh, visits in the encounter data compared to the HEDIS data. And we also looked at um, the range from the you know, contracts that the Two and a half percentile to the ninety-seven and a half percentile um, here, and it ranged um, from um, you know a much lower number, so you know less than 0.6 uh, to one point two. Um, when we, um, as we you know we used method two and method three, where we added in information service use from the outpatient files. Um, you know, in method two, the BDN contract is only slightly lower than the HEDIS data in terms of capturing um, visits in the encounter data. And in method three, actually, we find a, a slightly higher number of contracts for the median, sorry, the slightly higher number of visits for the median contract in the um, encounter data compared to the HEDIS data. And that also is reflected in the, um, the, the ranges. Okay. So um, this figure is showing um, the distribution of this ratio over time um, across contracts, and it's showing a, a few more points. So instead of just showing the median and the um, 97 and a half and two and a half percentile, we're also adding the 25th and 75th percentile. And um, a couple of kind of interesting patterns emerge in this figure. Um, the first is that, somewhat surprising to me, um, you don't see a whole lot of improvement from 2015 to 2018 in terms of the median. Like it stays pretty similar. And maybe that's fine because actually the median was, you know, the encounter data was actually capturing, you know, more visits than the HEDIS data. Um, but I would also say that it was um, striking to me how the 25th and 75th percentile were actually pretty close to the median, which was right around one in terms of this ratio. So it's it's basically saying that for, you know, for 50%, the ratio of visits in the encounter to HEDIS data falls between 0.999 and 1.07, which I think is pretty good. I mean, it shows fairly, fairly good um, correspondence between the two data sets. Um, and I found that reassuring. Now, you know, the outliers are definitely either capturing um, a lot more visits in the encounter data or, or relative to the HEDIS or a lot more in the HEDIS data on the bottom end. But, um, you know, for many contracts, they're pretty close. 
Um, this is essentially the same figure, um, but looking at those top five Medicare Advantage insurers. And 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 really, um, it do, didn't appear that the top five insurers really had um, qualitatively different uh, reporting patterns um, than the uh, full set of contracts. Uh, but again, I would say, you know, for 50% of the contracts, they're pretty close to, to one in terms of this ratio. Um, <clears throat> so now this is just looking at the actual um, encounter to heat ratio for the median contract within these uh, large insurers. And, um, you know, it, there, there's definitely some variation um, across the carriers. So, um, you know, I, Humana, Aetna, and Anthem are pretty close to one in, in terms of this ratio. Although even within the Anthem contracts, you know, there are some contracts um, that um, have, you know, quite a bit fewer uh, visits in the uh, encounter data relative to HEDIS. And in this case, um, quite a few more um, visits in the, the uh, encounter data. Um, Kaiser was a bit of a, a mystery here. So we were definitely measuring um, fewer visits in the encounter data. And um, this was, you know, quite, you know, for, for um, some contracts within the Kaiser data, we found a much, a much smaller ratio, which we, um, we didn't really uh, fully understand or get to the bottom of. Let's move on to the um, emergency department visits. So again, the table here is very similar to what I showed for the um, ambulatory outpatient visits. We're showing here the um, the ratio the median the the ratio of encounter to HEDIS visits for the median contract. Um, again, method one just using the the outpatient file in this case. So just looking at facility data, um, the ratio is 0.947. So capturing fewer visits in the encounter data compared to um, the HEDIS data. Um, it's closer, just above one, using our methods two and three. Um, Okay, and then I had a question from um, Paul. Does the very high values relative to HEDIS suggest that HEDIS is not a good, good standard? What could explain the presence of so many more visits in the encounter data? Um, I think that's a, um, a a good question, and I think I would um, I think I would you know refer you um, to some of the discussion in the 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 MedPAC reports. Um, from 2019 and 2024, um, which just notes that, um, you know, the, the, the HEDIS data have a, you know, somewhat complex set of specifications that the plans, um, try to meet when they submit their own data. And, um, and so it's, it's not exactly, I think I would ag agree with the, um, the point that it's not exactly a gold standard, um, and that there's. You know, we learned something about how well these correspond, um, but it's not like um, the, it's not necessarily the case that the HEDIS data are perfect. Um, okay. And and just uh, reiterating here, you know, there is quite a bit of variation in this ratio across the contracts um, and across the methods. Okay. Um, here too, again, looking at, the distribution of ratios across um, across contracts over time using the most inclusive method, method three. Um, there's not a whole lot of change from 2015 to 2018, um, but again, the uh, interquartile range is like looks pretty good. So for about half the contracts, like um, the ratio is right around one. So I find that to be um, somewhat reassuring. Um, but there definitely are some outliers. Um, so here is the same thing for the top five Medicare Advantage insurers. Again, um, um, you know, I think here maybe the outliers are a little bit uh, less far aflung. I mean, so here, you know, for all plans, the the, the top here was 1.4 and the bottom was below 0.8. Here, the um, 97 and a half percentile is right around 1.2. So it's little bit uh, more narrow of a distribution, but but definitely still um, some outliers 
um, at the bottom and top of the distribution. Um, here again are the um, the emergency department visit ratios across contracts within the top five Medicare Advantage insurers. Um, you know, here I think Kaiser is less of a an outlier, um, and really um, for the median contract for each carrier, the ratio is right around one. So um, it's a little lower for Aetna, but overall. Um, it, it looks okay. Um, and I would also say the, um, the, you know, looking at the, um, bottom and top of the distribution, there's sort of a little less, um, uh, noise here as well. So especially for like United health group, it's only ranging from 0 0.977 to 1.16. So, um, a little less variation, um, for the ED visits. Um, so just to summarize this analysis, um, we maybe characterize this as sort of medium concordance between the HEDIS and encounter-based um, outpatient and ED visit rates. Um, so it looks like the median contract has pretty good con concordance and around 50%, you know, around 50% of plans have rates within, um, you know, plus or minus 6%. Um, but there remain contracts where there is um, considerably less concordance, so over 20% uh, difference in the encounter versus HEDIS data. Um, and, and overall, um, you know, some of this could be driven by, um, you know, different interpretations of the HEDIS specifications across carriers, and it could be driven by sort of some of the smaller contracts as well. Um, and and our results are consistent with uh, Jia Jung's work um, from in, in health services research. So she actually looked at um, sort of the you know how well individual contracts um, the concordance between the HEDIS and Encounter data. Um, so that's a a good paper to read. But I do think that as you're working with the the Encounter data, the public HEDIS data, you know, can be a useful gauge for um, you know for the data you're working with. How complete are your the contracts in your data. Um, okay. Any questions on that analysis before we move on? All right. So now I'm going to present an example of research that um, a, a research question that we've tackled uh, with ResDAC, um, looking at, working with the encounter data, so the carrier in the um, outpatient files, and it's exploring the the recent growth in uh, primary care organizations that receive full risk capitated payments from Medicare Advantage plans. So, um, you know, when we think about um, a primary care organization receiving a capitated payment, um, this leads to some financial incentive to use uh, more outpatient visits if that results in a reduction in um, more costly emergency department uh, visits or inpatient admissions even. And so the, the question that we were investigating in this analysis was what is the association of um, you know, receiving care from one of these full risk um, primary care provider organizations um, with evaluation visits um, emergency department visits and hospital admissions. We used as a sort of natural experiment um, the opening of Chen Med uh, clinics in uh, Philadelphia and Jacksonville, Florida in um, sort of late summer, early fall of 2018. And so Chen Med is one of the sort of pioneer organizations that is um, receiving fully capitated uh, you know, payments from Medicare Advantage plans. And so the approach we used is that we compared um, the Chen Med enrollees um, to the non-Chen Med enrollees in the same market using a differences and differences estimation approach. So we um, estimated relative changes in healthcare utilization outcomes um, for the um, the Chen Med enrollees before and after they enrolled in Chen Med compared to 
uh, the, the changes over the same period for the control group. And so um, we used for this the, um, the carrier, outpatient, and inpatient encounter data, um, the master beneficiary summary file, um, plan characteristics file, and also um, the Medicare data on provider practice and specialty file. So this was the um, also known as the MDP pass. We used that file um, to identify the ChenMed uh, physicians. And today I'm going to be presenting just data on the evaluation and management visits and the outpatient emergency department visits. The key challenge um, in this analysis uh, was to um, identify the Chen Med patients, as well as the control group, but especially the Chen Med patients. And so the way that we did this is that we um, identified the addresses for the new Chen Med clinics in Philadelphia and Jacksonville. Um, and then we were able to identify a list of physicians um, which were identified by the NPI code at each location um, in the um, MDP pass data. And then um, we were able to identify the Chen Med patients based on um, beneficiaries um, who had outpatient visits with the Chen Med NPIs after the 2018 opening um, of both of these Chen Med clinics in Philadelphia and Jacksonville. Um, and we focused on individuals who were also enrolled in Medicare Advantage. And so we, we found these um, patients in the, um, the carrier encounter data. And then our control group were uh, Medicare Advantage enrollees in the same geographic market, so the Philadelphia and Jacksonville market. Um, but to, you know, as an attempt to reduce um, selection bias, we focused on those enrollees uh, who kind of lived further away from Chen Med, the Chen Med location. So, um, you know, there is like this strong evidence that a key determinant of where you receive care is um, is where if you're closer to a, a given clinic. Um, so let's just start by looking at the, the characteristics of the Chen Med sample compared to the control group. Um, and, and what you see here is that... Um, there are like stark differences between the Chen Med um, patients and the control group. So um, as an example, in Philadelphia, the percentage of Chen Med patients who were um, black and non-Hispanic was 77.8% in the Chen Med group, but it was only 6.9% in the control group. I mean, so that is a quite a large difference. Um, you also see a high percentage of the Chen Med enrollees um, were uh, dual eligible. So they were enrolled in Medicaid, um, or they were enrolled in a special needs plan, much higher than the um, the uh, the control group. Um, and so to adjust for this issue, we, uh, we ended up weighting the um, control groups using an inverse propensity score uh, weights. Um, and so once we implemented those weights, actually the um, you know, by design, the the control group, uh, the members of the control group who looked more like the Chen Med uh, patients in terms of observable characteristics were kind of upweighted, and we had more balance um, for the control group, um, and sort of a similar pattern in Jacksonville as well. So let's start by looking at the outpatient visits, um, and so this is plotting out the, um, and again, this is coming from the the uh, the carrier encounter data, um, the percentage of beneficiaries with an outpatient visit in a given month. Um, and what you see is that for the control group over this period from um, 2018 through, um, you know, uh, fall of 2019, um, before and after the opening of the Chen Med, um, and sorry, this is actually... There is a typo here someplace. Okay, the, the typo is right here. This should be October 18, not October 19. Um, so the the Chen Med opened in September of 2018. And you see that for the control group, the percentage of beneficiaries with a visit stayed pretty constant over this whole period. Um, but you know, looking at the Chen Med patients, um, and, and this is the red line here, um, the the percentage of beneficiaries with a visit was pretty similar 
in the pre period um, to the control group. Um, but then after ChemMed, after the ChemMed clinic opened, we see a huge spike in the percentage of beneficiaries um, who had a visit in each month. Um, and so I think this is kind of strong evidence that, um, you know, one of the approaches that ChenMed uses, they're taking on full risk. Um, they are trying to get their um, their patients into the clinic to avoid, um, you know, downstream adverse health outcomes or um, unnecessary emergency department visits. And you can see that that increase in outpatient visits, like this, uh, the 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 data I showed on this slide, th these are outpatient visits in any clinic. It, it can be ChenMed or not ChenMed, but you can see that that big increase in outpatient visits really came from um, visits at the ChenMed clinic. And that's shown by these, um, the, the dashed line here. So it was pretty much zero before the opening of the clinic. And then it, um, the large majority of the increase comes from ChenMed. All right. <clears throat> And then looking at Jacksonville, we see a similar pattern. So the control group has a kind of um, constant percentage of um, outpatient visits before and after the opening of, of the Chen Med Clinic given by the dash line, um, but there is an increase in um, uh, for the, Ch the Chen Med Court after the opening of the clinic. And so then we were wondering like, did this, um, how did this apply to emergency department visits? Um, and, you know, looking at Philadelphia, like there did seem to be like, you know, while the control group was pretty constant in terms of the probability of an emergency department visit over this period, um, the Chen Med cohort, there there did seem to be a uh, relative uh, like reduction in, in ED visits after the opening of um, Chen Med. Um, and Jacksonville, it kind of seemed like the um it seemed like the percentages were more there was like not a relative reduction in ed visits um for for those patients so um the takeaway from this uh from this analysis was that it, it appeared that with capitated um primary care we saw um you know more outpatient visits and at least in Philadelphia, fewer emergency department visits. And so uh, to us, this, you know, was a pretty kind of powerful story about um, the potential of capitation. Um, I think for the purpose of our session today, it also, I thought this analysis kind of highlighted the utility of Medicare Advantage encounter data. Like I thought it was striking that we were able to capture these patterns and it, um, they were pretty, uh, they, they coincide with, I think, the economic predictions about you know, the incentives to provide different types of services and capitation. Um, but there were some challenges using these data. So one thing that I, I didn't show because we never really exactly ironed it out is that, um, you know, after the the period of data that, that I showed um, in these figures, there was sort of an implausible drop in outpatient visits in late 2019 for the Philadelphia cohort. Um, and um, in particular, it seemed like a lot of it was coming from just the Chen Med clinic data was just not in the encounter data. Um, and we we did quite a bit of work trying to figure out like what happened to that data. Um, we we spoke, you know, tried to uh, talk with, uh, you know, Chen Med <laughs> to see if anything was going on with their clinics. We talked um, with folks at CMS and, you know, just there it, there was not really a, 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 an explanation for that data being missing. And it didn't seem um, plausible how large the drop was. So our response to that issue was just to drop those months of data. But I think it highlights that, um, you know, whatever, I think this also goes for the, the fee-for-service data as well, but it's really important to plot the data over time. And um, as a part of your research process, perform some checks of the data um, because there are some potential potholes out there that you just need to be aware of. Um, I, other issues were that there were some uh, missing physician NPIs um, in the carrier claim level data. Um, and, you know, we didn't have NPIs in the line level data. Um, so, so that was like another source of missing data in our analysis. Um, and then of course, another challenge is that we had, um, you know, great data on utilization. I mean, aside from these missing data issues, 
but we did not have payment information. So we couldn't sort of quantify, like, did this save um, actual money, the substitution between um, outpatient visits and ED visits. Um, and that's, I think, a, a wider, a broader issue in the encounter data, which we'll actually talk about in the next segment. All right, um, so I have a few references here at the end. Um, these are really useful papers for um, thinking about the completeness of the encounter data, and in particular, the carrier and outpatient files. Um, and then here's a, a MedPAC um, report about um, like that really focused in, on the outpatient and carrier files as well.